What's up, Internet? This is the Pop Geek Podcast, uh, coming to you live to a hard drive from Las Vegas. I am Matt the Noob. This is my friend, superfan Eric, my man Adam on the ones and twos, who's going to be doing our technical producing uh, for us. So uh, there's no bigger week in Geek than the Comic-Con weekend in San Diego, and Eric is fresh back from there. And so now I'm going to pick his brain, and we're going to geek out here for a little while and talk about all the cool stuff that we saw and didn't see at Comic Con this year. So if you want to kick it off, Eric, I know you were in uh, you were in Hall H for at least the first day, right? Yeah, actually, this is actually my first year. I've gone in these four years to Comic Con. This will be the first year I actually got to actually be in Hall H and right. get that whole experience. And it actually wasn't too bad. You know, you hear these horror stories about people camping out overnight for a whole yeah. week just to get a ticket in. Well, I think you even use the term line con. I've heard line con <laughs> several times where it's just lines snaking all over the... Pretty much that's what all of Comic Con is. And once you're walking in the booths, it is a line for everything. A line to buy a toy, a line to talk to a, a actor, artist, writer, whoever. There's a line for everything. There's a line for the bathroom. It's right. really ridiculous. Yeah. You know? So with line, with the hall age, usually in the past people have camped out overnight to get into the next hall to look at the next trailer coming out for the big movies, uh, new trailers or sneak peeks of new shows coming out for the next season. Right. And the particular one that I wanted to get into was the Star Wars panel, which was on Friday. Right. And they changed it up this year, so instead of waiting overnight, you had to wait in line the night before to get a wristband. Right. They had done that a couple years past, but they brought it back this year. And so I waited in line for eight hours <laughs> outside on the wharf of San Diego yeah. just to get myself a wristband. Started at 5.30 in the afternoon. Didn't get my wristband till midnight. Now, thankfully, you were not in cosplay. No, no, no. You were not no, no. <laughs> completely wearing, you know... A stormtrooper outfit or anything like now, that. Now, nice, comfortable clothes, shorts, yeah. t-shirt. Got a little chilly, but nothing too bad. Right, right. So I literally get my, my wristband, and now that I allowed me to come back in line the next morning right. at 7.30 in the morning, wait another three hours to then get into the Hall H. <laughs> Good, well, at least you, you are guaranteed a spot, though, right? Yes, the, yes. The wristband was a guaranteed spot. Exactly. So, yeah. so once you had the wristband, you're guaranteed in. Once you're in Hall H, you're in all day unless you leave. Right. Uh, once you leave, you're given a little ticket. You can come back within a specific time. Oh, okay, cool. So I could go stretch my legs, go buy a toy, and come back, and it was all gravy. So in Hall H, I got to experience the Walking Dead panel. Right. Then right after that was Fear of the Walking Dead. Right. There was Game of Thrones, which I'm not into, but a lot of people who were there were ecstatic about it. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> and then right after that was uh, Star Wars, and which I got to cool. experience also. So, I mean, you started with Walking Dead. I know you're, you're a Walking mm-hmm. Dead fan. I don't follow the show. I know I should. <laughs> uh, my excuse is I have a four-year-old. That's my, uh, that's, that's my uh, mm-hmm. forever my uh, uh, catchphrase. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. I have a four-year-old. Well, he's like four now, right? He should be yeah. into zombies yeah, by yeah, now. Yeah, he should probably be getting into <laughs> zombies and seeing people torn apart. But, yeah. But, like, I read a lot of the comics. Uh, what kind of previews did they have for Walking Dead? I mean, I every, everyone does something different. Sometimes they do trailers, sometimes they do behind the scenes, sometimes they do whatever. Yeah, so they brought the whole cast from the seasons, and they had the panel up there, so you got to ask them question and answer type deal. And they did show a trailer for the next upcoming season, season six. It's about a three-minute trailer. It looks, it looks bananas. Like, it's gruesome, it's gritty, you don't know who's fighting who, there's a turmoil within the group, you know, and it's just... Right. They showed a cl- brief clips of the, I don't know if you heard about this term, the mega herd. It's supposed to be no, a giant mega herd of zombies that's supposed to be roaming around the world. Oh, really? And I think they finally interact with that herd this time, this season, or this Sweet. upcoming season. And then that leads into, you said there's a spinoff now. Mm-hmm. But what I've heard about the spinoff is it's not necessarily, uh, hey, we're all trapped looking for zombies, because again, you'd just be retreading the same ground. It's kind of a prequel to what you see in Walking Dead. Yeah. Like, I know Walking Dead starts in the hospital mm-hmm. with uh, the main guy. Rick. Rick. <laughs> and, you know, he's waking up, and it's already it's already on. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's kind of a prequel, but he did, uh, Robert Kirkman did say that it will eventually catch up to the present time of The Walking Dead. But, yeah, it is a spinoff called Fear of the Walking Dead, yeah. which takes place in Los Angeles at the time of the outbreak. Right. So you actually get to see fresh zombies turning uh, they're not decayed and, and just decomposing anymore. They're kind of like, right. oh, that's a pretty hot looking zombie there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more like a disease outbreak type yes. story, not necessarily. Yeah. Well, I guess they're all disease anyway, but it's like, yeah, it's it's not so much zombie attacks as you're seeing the, 
the change. Right, and the protagonist this time is different than like Rick, Rick Grimes, who's a cop, a badass, who knows how to take care of himself. This right. guy is a family man who's going through real what life world problems. He has a divorce, he's divorced, he has a divorced wife and two kids that he right. splits between the two. And Cause, yeah, this, you want joint custody yeah. in the zombie apocalypse is, is where you want to be. Yeah. yeah, not only does he have to deal with zombies, but now he has to deal with his joint custody kids too. Mm-hmm. And then it's funny, they mentioned in the preview trailer that they showed that his ex-wife has to then join in with his new love interest. I could I think it's his fiance now, his new fiance and his yeah. kids all grew up into one to try and survive the zombie outbreak. Nice, yeah. Well, I mean, I, the, the beauty of all zombie stories, you know, especially the, the George Miller, or not George Miller, um, I forgot his damn name. But anyway, The Walking Dead um, all spawns from Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Uh, and the Night of the Living Dead, the beauty of it was we put all these people in this terrible situation and it's the people that create kind of the terribleness, really. Yeah, exactly. Like, the monster is just the effect. It's, this is what's locked you here. It's the background. And then now you have to live within this world that it's created. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's why I love about zombie stories is the zombies are cool. Yeah, great. They tear people up. But what they've done is they put a bunch of people who are healthy or whatever into a horrible situation. Yeah. And now you all have to deal with each other. And yeah, Walking Dead was great about it. You don't know who's a murderer, mm-hmm. who's a prisoner, or who's whatever, or how they got there. But yeah, it's going to be horrifying. Yeah, that's kind of what they hinted at season six. Like, they asked the panel, who do you fear more? What are you more afraid of, the zombies or the humans? He goes, oh, I'm totally afraid more of the living than the dead. Right, yeah. And that's always the, the beauty of the zombie story. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, other than that, so Game of Thrones, we can touch on this really quick. <laughs> we got to... Check our geek card a little bit. Yeah. I, I can't watch Game of Thrones. I have a four-year-old. Right. Yeah. So I uh, I hear there's a lot of sex and people's heads getting exploded and dragons and such, which are less, you know, less dirty. But yeah. uh, do, do you watch Game of Thrones at all? Were you in interest? Three kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same boat. In fact, yeah. I, I started watching Orange is the New Black one time. Oh, and there you go, the yeah. very first episode, like three minutes in, Boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Had to turn it off right away. Yeah, my, my wife watches it after everyone's asleep. She there you can go. turn out Orange is the New Black. Yeah. <laughs> then I watch it when I'm alone. No. Well, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't watch Game of Thrones either. Yeah. I, don't, I can't afford the channel, so. <laughs> but what kind of preview did you get? Was it was a trailer? Was it. Uh, I know there was a ton of cosplay for Game yes, of Thrones. Yes, the cosplay was alone was amazing. There was even a guy, I think it was the, the, the I guess it was the White Queen and her dragons yes. came up to answer, yeah. ask a question to the panel, oh, so really? that was pretty impressive. <laughs> um, they just talked about, it, just, it was basically, basically a question and answer type thing. I don't yeah. think they really showed much, or I didn't see it because okay. I was char- trying to charge my phone and sure. <laughs> take a walk to go get some food, so I took a little break in between right, there. Right, Game of Thrones. Yeah, just because I wanted to really get all my energy and everything stored up for Star Wars, which is right after right, that. Right. Now, with, with Star Wars, I know it was kind of unique because months before, they're putting out that Abrams is not bringing a trailer, mm-hmm. there's not going to be any new footage, mm-hmm. and everybody was kind of like, sure, it's going to be a trick, it's going to be a secret, <laughs> they're going to break out some massive trailer, right? now, And they didn't. Nope. But what they did was they gave you a practical trailer. Yeah. Or a behind-the-scenes trailer that, I mean, I saw, I, I was blown away by it. But, you know, tell me what you thought about it, but I, I got a whole bunch of thoughts about what you see in that trailer, which is which is unreal. Well, pretty much, you know, Jay Abrams comes out, and then uh, he brings up the whole cast from the new movies, and then he even brought up the cast from the, the they call them legendary cast. Oh, really? You know, so Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Her- right. Mark Harrison Ford all came out, too. And he did say right off the bat, you know, right off the bat, um, I don't have any, we don't have anything to show you guys. Which is kind of odd since you're six months out, you don't have some kind of finished footage to right. show us. At least they're, a, they're getting close here. Yeah, right. you know, a, a, a stormtrooper or something. Come on, you right? Know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but he did say, you know, we do have this, and he showed that practical behind the scenes yes. uh, montage, which was amazing, and the whole audience just loved it. He yeah. showed how practical he's, how a practical approach he's taken to everything. Yes. Nothing CG. There's right. actual people in suits you get to interact with. I they're know. on lo- they're on locations. Um, I don't know the actor's name, but the the, the main character mm. that was a stormtrooper on the trailer that we saw in yeah. the in, in the in the desert. He goes, "Yeah, that was a pretty hot day, you know." J. J. Abrams told me, "Yeah, I'm gonna put you out in a stormtrooper costume in the desert in the summer, so in Dubai. So let's go do this." He goes, "Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me!" <laughs> right. And uh, what I liked about the the practical trailer, and I I can't tell in in a way it's, "Hey fans, look what we're doing." Yeah. But also in a way because of what Lucas had done on the prequels. Where he just green screen the crap out of that movie, like and yeah. it's so annoying to where the light is fake, and you're like, 
Dude, you could have went to a desert. You could have right. went to a place with a window and just shot this stupid piece. Why did you have to CG everything? And then and they even go in the practical, they pull open the back of the camera and you see film spinning. Yeah. Because Lucas made a big deal that he shot it all digital. Right. And so they're like, no, look, we got film, and we got a fat guy in a costume, and he's like, he looks like a Jabba type guy, and then, you know, uh, we got real stormtroopers walking around, and somebody p- pointed out that stormtroopers aren't the same size as they used to be. I don't know if you caught that in the trailer. Mm-hmm. They are they're, they're varying in size, yeah. so I don't know what that means for the world, if you think about it, because does that mean they moved away from clones, and you got some sort of more of a volunteer style mm. army force? Um, I mean, the other cool stuff is, of course, you see Harrison Ford sit in yeah. to the Millennium Falcon, and he's sitting with that young female character who no one knows what, who she is. She has a name, but it doesn't say Solo at the end of her name. It doesn't say right. Skywalker at the end of her name. So you don't know if she's related or if it's some sort of... I've heard people question some sort of bastard child from a previous <laughs> relationship that uh, you don't know about. Well, you her- know that she's a junker. That, yeah, I was gonna uh, say like her costume kind of yeah. shows like a reminiscences of Anakin Skywalker when he was a little kid, right. you know, kind of just uh, shreds and, tar- right. and tears. But it would be, you know, equivalent with a uh, desert planet yeah. that you see a lot of in the in the trailers. Uh, some of the other stuff I saw that I picked up on, and again, I don't know if I'm just geeking out at stupid stuff. There's a portion where the there's a Tie Fighter crashed. Yes, and you see it, and it also has a red stripe on it, which is a little different mm-hmm, than a normal mm-hmm. Tie Fighter. But the other thing I took away from that though is that the Tie Fighter is crashed. A Tie Fighter is a space fighter. It's a, it's not. It shouldn't be very far away from a uh, destroyer. Yeah, because they're a short range fighter. The fact that it's on a planet means either that it crashed there because they don't invade with Tie Fighters. No, not no. that I know of. I mean, they could maybe I guess, but. Seeing it crashed on a planet means either the war is over, it's kind of like a, hey, this is a symbol of that, but also maybe that it's a different, you know, bad guy type of thing. I, I don't know. I, was, like, I would think like it had to be... a short-range thing. Yeah, I would think it had to be yeah, different, like only because, uh, you know, it had that, like I said, it had that red stripe on there. Yeah. So, in the previous movies, there had never been a TIE fighter with any other markings besides just no, all black. No, it's always all black or all gray. Yeah. And you saw the different versions of it, you had the advanced and the, the bombers and stuff like that, but yeah, you never saw one with any sort of paint stripe on it. So it makes you wonder, like, kind of near the end of, you know, the original trilogy, what does happen to that Empire Force? Yeah. Is it some sort of spread out? Do they start, like, going rogue? Do you see all this other stuff? And I think the the hard part now is as, as a fan, is where did they go in the canon of stuff? Yeah. Because books are technically canon. Comics are technically canon. Well, books, except for the expanded universe. He did say that they're not going to take all the expanded universe right. and make it canon. Right, so. because there, I know there's a series of books that actually takes off when the movie ends. Yes. And those, in a way, I think are going to be part of it, but it'll be like an abstract kind of Marvel type of thing. Yeah. But, you know, they're going to pick and choose the stuff that they want. Which yeah. I think is smart. Yeah. So and so after that, they really didn't have anything else to show, and they already right. told us that. But they did say, you know, we all know you guys are fans, and we all know that it would be kind of let down if we just ended the the hall at this time, with, right. especially it being Comic Con, and you know we expect something big from Comic Con. So he goes, but I know you guys all love the music of Star Wars, right? And the whole crowd goes crazy and goes, yeah, woo, we love right. the music, great job. And he goes, well, wouldn't it be cool to go see a concert? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go do it. Let's go and have ourselves a Star Wars concert. I have tickets for every single one of you. All 6,500 uh, attendees are going to get a free concert of the Star Wars music. And sure enough... Yeah, I was going to say, what is that like, though? Like, It was... All 6,500 people, 6, people got up? Pretty much, yeah. Were, like that. I saw some of the video that somebody snuck online, which was like, all right, follow a stormtrooper and go yeah. across the street. <laughs> and like, how was it, though? Like, What, what was it and how was it? So it was amazing. The, everyone was super on board with it and super yeah. nice and they did bring out stormtroopers to kind of lead the way out but yeah. everyone got up was orderly was comfortable no pushing no shoving yeah you walk outside you get a little lanyard pass when you exit uh-huh. and it was nice because they had everything taped and blocked off for just us oh, nice. so you got this giant sea of people walking <laughs> out around the comic-con uh down the road and then you cross the street to the marina uh-huh. where they have the orchestra Symphony Orchestra uh, stage set up okay, for... Okay, so it was a symphonic thing. Yes, okay. yes. Because he had that already set up for like Star Trek Into Darkness. They usually play the movie along with oh, the Symphony yeah, Orchestra. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And so 
that was the day before, so they just took over the concert hall or venue nice. and had it for us. Right, and cool. so you arrive, you show them your badge, you walk right on in, and then you go to the lightsaber table, and you get to choose your own lightsaber. Oh, really? Yeah, you get to choose anything. Like a full-size one? Oh, uh, with the little toy Hasbro oh, ones, okay, you know, yeah, that yeah. still light up and you can hit people with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone got a free lightsaber. You can choose between Luke, uh, Darth, or Yoda. And of course, I got Yoda. They had the green one. Yeah. And awesome. you just all pile into the grass area, and they had some stands for um, ADA and other people just want to sit. And yeah, they just gave us a 30-minute concert of Star Wars music <laughs> with the San Diego Live Symphony Orchestra. Cool. And That's it was cool. cool. John Williams wasn't there, unfortunately, but he did come right. up on screen and say... I'm sorry, I can't be there. I'm working really hard on the new movie. I want to make sure you guys, the new music is, matches just as much as the old music. Sure. I know you guys are a fan of the music, so here's a free concert of some of the favorite uh, soundtracks that I like. And right. so we just went off and they showed some clips from the movies. Oh, they and, did. So they had a visual mm-hmm. on it. Too. Oh, yeah, awesome. yeah. And they went really well together and this yeah. orchestra just played like crazy. Everyone was going nuts, swinging the lightsabers around. <laughs> <laughs> it was very really funny. They had the cast walk out to, uh, to start it off and... Yeah. Mark Hamill, when he comes out, does this whole little pose with his lightsaber, know. and Harrison Ford comes out <laughs> using the lightsaber as a crutch, like a like a cane. Oh, nice. <laughs> this would be funny. And it was funny. It was, it was just amazing. Yeah, I saw this uh, picture that was taken at Comic-Con. I guess. Yes. Oh, my gosh. These two actually showed up, huh? Yep. Oh, yeah. They all did. I mean, for, what, 73, I think they, they, they looked yeah. really damn good. Well, I, think, also, I think Mark Hamill's 63. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Harrison Ford is, I think, close to 70 now, right? Yeah. Wasn't yeah. he recently in a plane crash? <laughs> yes, he was. Yes, yeah, he was. Like, oh, that's awesome. Some grizzled people right there. Yeah. yeah. yeah they didn't really shave and clean up much for this. Well, Mark no. Hamill actually kind of looks older there, but he's, I think, younger. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to touch on, I mean, I know, I know you didn't take part of this. That was pretty much it for uh, the uh, Hall H stuff. Yeah. But um, I know you saw the Batman Superman trailer. I did. did. You saw the longer one? Yep. It's, I'm really excited about it, but I'm really afraid of it. Because <laughs> I, I love DC. Like, Batman's my guy. That's my favorite superhero. And they've done great with Batman. Oh, yeah. The Keaton Batmans were great. The Bale Batmans were great. Uh, you know, if you get crazy about canon and all that stuff, whatever. Those were just great movies, I thought. But, like, this has me a little bit worried because DC struggles yeah. with some of their stuff. And they struggle with Superman. Like, it's weird that the best Superman was the, what, 1979 Richard Donner film. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone after that has been a lesser version of it. Like, you know, the Brandon Ralph one didn't make any freaking sense. No, I, I don't know what that the hell one. that was. And then the latest one was good. Yeah. But the one thing I'll, I'll say about the trailer and about what that movie looks like is the power of social media and the craziness has worked its way into film. So you saw it with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Everyone was mad at Lucas for green screening all that shit. Yep. And so they did an entire practical trailer showing you that they're not green screening <laughs> anything. And so then with Batman Superman, a lot of people bitched at the end of Superman, they destroy Metropolis yeah. in that fight. Oh, yeah. And uh, people were online going... How many people did Superman just kill? Because mm-hmm. I know they weren't really thinking about it when they sh- when they shot the fights. Yeah, they think, oh, this is cool. It's the destruction and action. Right. Oh my god! <laughs> right, look how cool this is. We cut this building in half. And yeah, it's like, uh, but yeah, with with that, now you're seeing almost this trial of Superman, mm-hmm. and you you get this weird political aspect. And again, it could be really bad because you see what happens when they put politics in an action film. Yeah, kind of with Star Wars, the the prequels too much um, talking too yeah. much talking and but it kind of gives you a cool thing to think about as S- superman is a public figure batman is not you know there's a mask there's no mask for you know even though superman puts a suit on it becomes clark kent it's it's he's a public figure like people know superman and he actually goes on trial apparently during this yeah and there's also a portion of it of him really pissing off Batman. We're not totally <laughs> sure why. Like, you see him cut down the Wayne building. Mm-hmm. And again, that would upset me a little bit, I guess, if I was a millionaire. You cut my building down. But then there's, like, him holding a girl. Well, a lot and, of people are speculating because he does, in yeah. the trailer, hold a news article of that day. and he does, and but writing, written on Yeah, uh, you killed... You let, you, you let your family die. Family die. And people were speculating that his family in that terms meant, like, his staff, his employees, his people oh. in the Wayne building. Okay. You know, maybe someone knows who yeah. he really is, or maybe the Joker is saying, ha, 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 you let your family right. die or something. 
And so that is maybe stirring up something like, okay, I need to go kick right. this guy's ass. And there's there's also speculation too around that is whether or not that was the Joker who sent that note. Mm-hmm. Because um, the thing that I've liked about most of the tone I've seen of the the Superman Batman stuff is what Lex Luthor is doing in all of them. Yeah, and it's a it's a different line for him because he was comic relief in a lot of the other films. <laughs> yeah, and here you see him look goofy, like he's clearly wearing the wig. Yeah, the wig is horrible. And, well, he's he's got to wear it. Though. <laughs> I don't know why the weird vanity of Lex yeah. Luthor is, but there's an element of him pulling strings mm-hmm. behind the scenes. Like, and I don't think that this film will have anything to do with it. But you're going to see him set something into motion that you're going to see later on in the Justice League films. Yeah, and plus you already saw him win the trailer. Around the green rock, which you can only assume is yes, kryptonite. kryptonite right? So that's got to be the only way that Batman is going to be able to beat Superman is that Lex Luthor yeah. secretly gives him that right. rock to study or design or use as a weapon against right, Superman. Of some sort, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that's the other thing, too. And I, I've heard another breakdown when you start to see Wonder Woman in the sequence. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one, it's really cool to see her on film, to see her in action. She looks good. Totally believable. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was worried about that character because, mm-hmm. I mean, in the past, you got, like, big boob girls and, like... Well, well Gal Gadot's a very like, frail, thin person she alone is. from the yeah. Fast and Furious movies. I always thought, really? She's really small. I thought that, too. But she she pulled it off. Well, and, and her background is weird. She's a beauty queen, but she also served in the Israeli army <laughs> for a while. Like, I think you kind of have to in Israel. Like, it's oh, kind yeah, of a, yeah, yeah. a mandated thing, but she did like two years in the Israeli army. And then her story is ridiculous. She's like, oh, yeah, I had a friend and I, I tried out as a Bond girl and I didn't get it. And I'm like, oh, and then Fast and the Furious called. And I'm like, <laughs> and then oh yeah then I had a friend who said maybe I should try out for this bat for this Batman movie and she said she went in and read she read a part from Pulp Fiction oh. and they're like well I don't know if you're a star in Israel now but you're gonna be and it was like she got the part dang but um, some of the stuff they said is some sort of uh, dream sequence that apparently she has she has some sort of premonition ability which I'm not real familiar with Wonder Woman mm. um, and there's two things about that it's like there's a scene where Batman is wearing pants, and that's weird, because he's got <laughs> pants on over his suit, and he's breaking a guy's neck, which, of course, you know, he doesn't kill people. Yeah. There's that. There's uh, a couple of other sequences where he's, fi- excuse me, fighting Superman that you're not sure are necessarily dream or not dream, and that kind of screws with the trailer a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but also, again, going back to some of the DC stuff that they do, they don't have that tight lid that Marvel has. So where Marvel, you could trace most of what happens in some of the, except for the Sony movies, to the Marvel Universe. And it's kind of directed. Like, they change little things. But the Batman versus Superman fight happened in the Frank Miller book right. in the 80s. And it's got a lot of 80s crap in it. It's an awesome book. It's my favorite comic of all time. And there's a, there's a big switch. There's, there's no kryptonite in that fight. You know, he's blown up in a nuclear bomb, and he gets weakened, and then he has to fight Batman, who's plugged into the entire power grid of yeah. Gotham, and that's the only way he can fight with him. Um, but yeah, like, you wonder, because, like I said, DC doesn't have that tight grip, but what I've noticed is, it's Zack Snyder doing the directing, but it's Zack Snyder with Chris Nolan. And again, it won't be connected to the Bale film, yeah. I don't think, but he has a good, hey, what can I do and what can I not do, at least I think. Because even though the Bane story kind of got away from him a little bit, the rest of those movies were amazing, and the, the Joker stuff was great. Yes, you know, and, uh, and I, I don't know how they're going to work all that back in. Yeah, you know, I have the no Jared idea Leto too. Joker is kind of goofy. Yeah, I'm not really fond of the, that uh, one either. The Suicide Squad stuff, but and I guess supposedly in this Batman versus Batman BVS yeah. movie, uh, I guess it's, Batman has been not Batman for twenty years. Yeah. He's, he's old Batman, which is yeah. kind of harkens back to the Frank Miller book, because he's he's almost retired. Yeah, he's actually gray hair and like yeah. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see the timeline of like how long has it been since the destruction of Metropolis. Yeah, because you know Batman or Superman came out, you know, in the middle of all this, mm-hmm. so it's like it has it been twenty years since then also, and, yeah. he, and he doesn't age because he's almost pretty much immortal, or right. is it Batman or Superman arrived or Superman became Superman, you know, around like. 18 years after Batman's been, not been Batman, you know? Uh, how they fall together? Age yeah, how, yeah. Yeah, I think they're, they're aging Batman. So Batman, I think, was doing his thing. 
But like in the movie, like because he goes to trial, like is it is this trial twenty years after the events of that? Oh no! I or is it like right that. after, like a couple I, years? I think it has to be common time. They, they have to coincide with each other. Okay. It's just that Batman in this universe is older. Okay. That he was born previously. Has been doing his thing right. in Gotham. This is a Metropolis deal. Okay. But they overlap. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing. That makes sense. The, the other kind of odd thing I noticed is there's a, supposedly a Wonder Woman Batman love connection. They've which I've to that before, yeah. It, uh, it happens in the comic, I guess. There was a short lived Justice League romance thing. Mm hmm. I'm not a big fan of that. Like, I don't know why you got to do that to Batman. To, well, and to it's kind of like, like are yeah, you just trying to get female viewers. I don't know. Does it help? I don't think it helps to have two superheroes doing that. Uh, it's all, it's always been Batman and Catwoman. You can't. You can't. Yeah, they they have the longest running. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you go to like the the bad the Batman wiki page, it's like <laughs> the whole Catwoman deal. But yeah, um, let's see, we're we're running short on time now, so we're we're gonna have to wrap it up. Anything else you want to throw in? I know we got some toys on the table if you want to. Talk yeah, about so I actually got a couple of these guys from Comic Con. I got the Harley Quinn here, and I got uh, Boba Fett. And then I picked up these guys from uh, Disney Infinity's pop-up store that they just kind of popped up randomly in one of the right. stores. Now, this uh, is something I can actually talk yeah, about. Yeah, there you because go. Because <laughs> I have a, f a four-year-old. We play Infinity all the time. Um, we don't have the Wii U. We still have the Wii, mm -hmm. which I have to hide these from him now because he <laughs> loves Star Wars. And, like, you know, I'm going to have to buy the Wii U just so we can play the Star yep. Wars Infinity guys. But he plays it on my wife's phone. I mean, he's a, he's a huge freak for all that stuff and like the prior iteration the part twos were all the marvel guys yes so he on the phone he could play as spider-man and as iron man mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's the, the best for him but yeah he's gonna be super into the star wars movie. yeah so version three is all star wars and then uh inside out from their yeah. new latest movie and so i've never played infinity at all until i saw these toys i'm like i gotta have the toys so i might as well get the game yeah and no, it's an incredibly well done game i mean disney you gotta take their hat off because it's like mm -hmm. oh here's a game it's sixty dollars <laughs> And every guy is fourteen bucks. So well, but thankfully, at this pop up store, when you go and do the experience, which is pretty, which is pretty much just like a photo op with one of your character, one of their characters. Yeah. Each person in your group got a free toy. Oh. So I got Chewbacca, Sadness, uh, the Vader. Tron girl, Vader, Yoda, Obi Wan, and a couple of others, all for oh, free. Man. Even by pre ordering the game, I got Vader for free, which oh, is an exclusive. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. So I got all that for free, and then I just got I, had, I paid up paid for these guys, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I like these fabrication guys, though. They, yes. they remind you of the, the Funko Pop guys. Yeah, it's the same but company. I, I like that there's a lot more detail. Yeah, the... the they're not just stickers, and they're not just paint. Exactly, and you get the actual stitching on here, you get the plush leather and all that. It's great, yeah. Cool. And I got those two for 35 so it was a good deal. <laughs> yeah, that's a real good deal. All right, well, I think that's it. I think we've made it through our Nugget Roll. <laughs> good job, guys. into uh, <laughs> Pop and Geek culture. This has been uh, Pop Geek from Las Vegas. We'll see you next time.